today we're going to do some nickel plating that's the tank I prepared the tank already so you got there you got the two nickel anodes one here and one over there then the bottom of this little red thing it's an aerator connected to a fish tank pump and on this side it's a heater a heater to heat up the solution the nickel solution to 43 degrees that's what you need to do nickel plating the solution is to be hot and it to be in continuous agitation that's why I'm using a pump over here got a power supply constant power supply where you can control volts and amps the amount of current required for nickel plating it's an average of one amp for an area of 100 square centimeters so it's very important to control the power the current that flows through the piece you want to plate in to have a nice plating and in this bucket here I got this solution the nickel solution that I prepared yesterday so in a little while I will put the solution into the tank turn the heater on when it's ready we'll be ready to plate in so as you see I put the anode one inside of the tank the reason why it's so it's because the power will be in the middle so the basic the current they are the ions of nickel will be flowing this way so we'll be connecting and plating the parts as you see I connected with the one wire the two copper bars and I will connect my positive over here and the negative will be on top of my nickel bar that will be here that's where I will have all my bits and pieces connected will be just sitting in there like that with the parts inside and here the other parts that I'm going to play in as you see the very small components was very difficult to calculate the area of those parts and here I got some other pieces that I want to plate those parts the nice shiny you need to polish them up with the nice shiny finish finishing and here I got some degreaser that I will immerse those parts in to remove all the graces that eventually it's on this party it's important you don't have no grease whatsoever that's a little tank where I can well put the solution to clean them up the solution it's made of a degreaser and some distilled water that I will heat it up to approximately 60 degrees Celsius I'll see you later when we're ready to to plate as you can see the solution is ready it's heating up at the moment to the temperature we have been to do for the plating 43 degrees and in this other bucket over here I got my components to be plated in a solution of degreaser they need to be soaking soaked in for a, at least 10-15 minutes as you can see all of my parts are now they come out of the solution and they are resting in a bucket with distilled water just to bring it out waiting for the plating here I got everything already in the tank just waiting for the the solution to heat up and then I will be starting the process of plating it's 36.9 so we'll be basically almost ready to go okay the solution is warming up time to check the temperature 36.8 so it's slowly going up as you see I got a digital thermometer it's useful you can use just a conventional thermometer if you want and as you can see I just wrapped some bubble wrap around the, bu the bucket to minimize the dispersion of heat I probably should have done this before before I started to plating so I would have would have very good if I had the bubble wrap tucked around the bucket very tightly with some sticky tape or something and as you see here I've got my power source set up 
I got the voltage pumped up to the maximum and the amps back to zero. So when we're ready to plug in, what I will do, we connect the wire and what I will do, I will slowly increase the amps until I reach the amount of power required for the purpose of what I'm doing. In the back, I got an area of 150 square centimeters, so the, the current that I will need will be one and a half amp. The control of power is critical for the plating. And the time of emission of the parts, it's obviously dictated at the amount, the thickness of the coating you want. So the longer they stay in, the thicker will be the plating. In my case, I will leave it immersed probably half an hour. Half an hour of immersion gives you around 0 0.001 thickness. It's very good for, let's say, heavy duty item con in contact with a lot of wearing, air oxidation, or stuff like this. So, it should be, we should be started playing very shortly. As you can see, now we start the plating. So the plating is happening as we speak. And as you can see, my power supply it started with basically well, one and a half volts and 1.55 amps. So one and a half volts, basically, if you wanted to really do a rough job, you could use a AA battery to do a small job like this. So a small AA battery will be enough to produce plating for some small components of our ghost ones. So now we're waiting half an hour and then after half an hour we're gonna turn the power off, take the pieces out and see how they come up. Then I will proceed with the rest of the plating. That's the first time I used this this heater so I didn't know that would ever taken so long so it's probably if you use this kit from Casbol, what you should do probably start the solution to warm up at least one hour before you're ready to play it because it takes more than an hour to warm up to the desired temperature. I'll see you shortly. So here we have the completed job. That's all of my parts. Nickel plated. It was a very long and slow process, mainly because of the size of the tank, because I couldn't put too much, too many parts in at the same time, so all I had to do three, four parts at the time. But the end result, as you can see, it's absolutely fantastic. That's without polishing it. So if I give it a little polishing, they'd be even more shiny, shinier they, shinier they would they are now. So there you are, nickel plating at home.